Um, well, we um, implant the electrode in his brain. Um, it's just five millimeters below the surface. We use trophy factors that encourage the brain to grow into the tip of the electrode. And once there, the, the tip is hollow and it bridges through, holds the tip in place. There are a couple of recording wires across that tissue, and so they record the activity, which is a reflection of his brain activity. Um, and then it's amplified and transmitted out across the skin. There are no batteries, um, it's a power induction system, no wires going through the skin. Um, so it should be long lasting. And in previous studies, we found the signals are long lasting. So um, we then process the signals and use them. Um, we're training, working with him for him to control the cursor. So it's like you, when you have a mouse and you, you know, move the cursor around the screen, um, we're trying to do the same thing with him. No, he's certainly a lot happier now. I mean, when he realized that he could move the icon, and we asked him to, you know, to do it against the clock and speed it up, uh, he was able to do that, and he was very happy. I would ask the same question about the computer, um, so turning around and controlling the patient. Oh, really? And if we need to ask him questions or he needs to tell us something, we go to the output one letter at a time. Now, there are many devices, scanning devices like that, he can go to the alphabet and he can click on, like just a switch to click one letter at a time and painfully talk. The point of this, being able to move a cursor, is that you can go around and choose your letters or your phrases much more quickly. And certainly if you're trying to control uh, a muscle stimulator and make a smooth movement, you have to do that in a proportional manner and quickly. Now how quick